How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics. And today we're going to be starting a new series. And those series can revolve around Siemens V90 drive. And later on, we're going to be looking at a new drive, a different drive. It's called S210. But first, we're going to start with V90. So the video is going to be revolving, as usual, what we do with the drives. We have tried to understand how the drive is wired. Have a look at it a little bit on the menu itself. Have a look at the softwares that we're going to be using and other stuff that comes around that would help you out hopefully help you out in the future usual structure that what we do there's going to be quite a few videos about this drive itself because there's quite a lot of things that uh, i have been, been working on and would like to show to you how it's done and hopefully you can get some good ideas and good tips out of it as well because i have tripped out quite a bit in some of the places with this uh, with this uh, setup as well when i drive just didn't work and i couldn't figure out why and hopefully hopefully I can show it to you those uh, little trips that I've been having so you can uh, learn them yourself and uh, rectify them if you do have them. So yeah, that's what we can do today. So today's job is to have a look at the wiring itself, have a look at the V-Assist and have a look how the V-Assist works. V-Assist is the, drive, the software that's provided by Siemens, which is free of charge. Obviously, you still need to re register it with Siemens itself to be able to get it, but it's free and it gives you a uh, full control of the drive for a parameter setup, a IP setups, and also a uh, uh, one button tuning to get your uh, get yourself up and running. And after that, Tier Portal has to take over and do its business what it does. And that's what we're gonna be finding out in a future video. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Oh, and also a couple of things I forgot to mention. Uh, we are going to be using a little bit help of a linear activator where our server motor is going to be connected. If the cable won't catch anything, that'd be great. As you can see, the motor itself comes with a uh, short lead and after that it's got plugs on it. So these plugs are purely made for you to buy an external cables that are coming in different lengths. So purely up and understand Siemens did that because you never know how long the cable can require. So later on, once they pl put plug like that on, the source sell it by the meter. My motor in here is a 0.4 kilowatt uh, motor with incremental encoder. Also, we're going to have a couple of uh, position sensors right here, as you can see in here. And they're going to be using for different types of pro uh, ideas and projects and tests that we are going to be doing in the later videos. So that's that. So let's jump on and have a look how the wiring's done. So here we are, so let's start with uh, the, our incoming cables that are coming from the motor. As you can see, one is uh, a uh, orange, one is green. Green one is for a uh, encoder and our orange one is for the motor. So green one gets uh, the encoder cable goes into X9, as you can see it in here. Motor, as you can see in here, is UVW and also the cables itself has does say UVW, which ones come from the motor. So do make sure these guys match up in here. Also, you have a resistor plug in there if you are as, uh, having a motor coming with the brake it's as well. This is where you would connect it. From there on, as you can see in here, we have a plug which is a uh, which is our uh, supply plug. As you can see, L1, L2 and L3. As you can see, the drive itself that does not come alive because this one is just to run at the core part of the actual motor, uh, motor itself. So it's not, uh, not, it's not the supply to run the actual uh, control part of the drive as well. So, so as you can see, L1 is our plus and L2 is our minus. I know it's a little bit of a confusing, but it is what it is. That's how it's been set up. So uh, it can be used for both. So from there on, we, as you can see in here, we plug that on. We have a 24 volt supply for the controls. As you can see, the drive has come on. And it's 24 plus and a minus coming from the DC power supply. And also, as you can see, we have a link in here which links out STO, which is a, um, a torque control, safe, safe torque control, uh, torque operation control, or something like that. So uh, basically, it's it, if these if this if these are open, and and uh, uh, some cables are going to it and they are open, and the drive will not run. So do make sure. That if you are using these, uh, then make uh, then uh, and you have a problem and drive doesn't run, so you most likely have uh, just first thing to check to make sure that's there. So after that, you have a uh, little connector bar, bar port in here where you have USB connection. So you can see my drive in here shows so like a white letters and numbers on it. The older versions got red, and the, as I have noticed that the red ver the, the red ones that has red on here. The communications with the Ethernet, uh, there's a two types of way communicating via the VSCs, I'm going to show you in a minute. 
the communications with Ethernet does not work with the red one. So maybe something, again, don't quote me, and I didn't do enough research to really get into it. But I have worked with both versions, and uh, the red ones that with the red screen did not work for me. So this is the later, latest, one of the latest versions, and it works very well from Ethernet. So I'm not going to be using USB, but USB is used for communication with via assist. Also, we have SD port in here. We're going to look at that SD port when it comes down to backing up your drive in the future. When it comes down to menu, nobody really ever uses this menu. Basically, to sort of basic troubleshooting, maybe uh, uh, and that's about it. Generally, it's all done via V assist. And obviously, you if you want to check quickly parameters, just click M. Goes into parameters and click OK. Very on, as you can see, it's got like a four groups, something like that. And also a key, a key which changes the data functions and so on. So definitely check your, just check yourself out. I never used it, so uh, uh, if you do, uh, make sure that uh, that there it is for you to do. In the later version, in in the later drives, the later drive that you is uh, uh, released, which is S210, they no longer even have this option anymore. So from there on, as you can see in here, we have this is a PN per ProfiNet version. So it's got two ports in here. I'm going to be connecting to port one. So this this one in here is going to that one uh, that port in here goes directly to my uh, S1500 PLC down here. Where as you can see in here, also uh, we have done already cover videos with the ET200 series uh, PLC. I have both of my position sensors uh, position sensors are wired into ET200 input card in here. So that's pretty much covers the drive itself. So once we've done that, so let's jump onto uh, the uh, V Assist. All right, let's load up our V Assist and have a look at it. So as you can see, V Assist opens like that. It gives you an option that says what, you, how you're going to be communicating with your drive. Uh, it says in here, I can establish communication via USB cable or Ethernet. I'm going to be doing Ethernet because I just like it Ethernet. So uh, and I can't be bothered to drag out another cable. So by clicking OK. This, this window in here does not open for you when you're using a uh, USB version, it just opens for the network version and it's going to uh, search all the drives and, and obviously the adapters that are available in this network for him. So by clicking this flash signal, let's have a look at it. So as you can see, my I'm not sure you can see it, probably not. The drive, it basically by clicking that one, the drive, uh, the what's it called, the ready light is going to be a, a flashing. Let me just double check that I am talking, saying the correct one. Yeah, it's going to flash in red and light, red, red, orange, red, orange. So it pretty much identifies you which drive it is. From there on, as you can see, I have a v, uh, the name of the drive, which is very, very important to make sure that you remember this, which is a V90 drive. Uh, that's how I named it. And also my IP address. And if you want to change it, just click device information. Again, I'll show you in a minute how that's done in the USB. So from there on, you can change that one to whatever name you want and edit your IP address if you wish to as well. Then click set and it'll be done. So once we've done that, we go into device commissioning. Okay, so this is the window that you would normally see when you open with the USB. So let's get uh, started. So first thing, as you can see in here, my motor already is identified because once it loads up, it checks the motor and gets all the data about it. So there we go. So there is a my motor selected. When it comes down to my, uh, motor, my drive selected. So when it comes down to my motor, I have a select motor button in here. And as you can see, it's got article number and sort of gives you an idea about the motors itself. And also it's got ID number. And then it says in here, please select the motor according to the article number or motor ID that can be found on the date nameplate. So if you look, if you go hover over, you can show exactly where on the nameplate that ID number is. Very straightforward, can't really go wrong. So just select 50, in my case, it's 54. And that's my, my and I uh, double check my, my article number as well, and it matches exactly what the number says. And just click OK. From there on, you select control mode. If by standard is S uh, speed control S. This is the standard mode that most of the people are using. And there's another uh, mode called basic positioner uh, control, control E post. It's done differently. This is something. This is something that uh, is going to uh, require additional videos, uh, separate for it. So we're not going to uh, talk about it yet. So uh, we're going to stick to speed control S. From there on, you, as you can see, you can turn the servo on if you wish to in here, and you can actually uh, go move forwards and backwards. Let me just do that. As you can see, by clicking on it or holding it, it's moving the table for us. Cool, right? So that's that. 
So from there on, as you can see, we go into Profinet, and there we need to select the Telegram. The Telegram is how uh, the, they are going to be uh, sending messages back and forward between the drive and the controller, which is the PLC. We are going to select the standard again, most what most people are using, standard Telegram 3. By clicking on it, it will open these two windows on it. By default, there would be nothing there. So do you need to make sure that that is selected in the drive, so drive knows which telegram it's been used. And also you're going to need to know that when you're going to set that on TF14 in future videos, what we're going to be doing. So we select the telegram 3. Obviously there's other ones, I'll leave in uh, the menu, uh, uh, the, no menu, the manual in the description below. So you can read up on them, about each one of them, what they and how they would work. So once you've done that, it alloc allocates automatically the control words and status words. So it's, it's, it's all done automatically, so you don't have to do anything cool right so from there on you have a network configuration so for me as you can see it's all blanked out because it's done on a different screen so uh, for you if you be usb you'll be able to do this if you're using from the usb from there on you got parameterizations you could configure ram functions set limits if you wish to torque limits and speed limits and our uh, inputs and output setups in there and also you can see all the parameters in here if you want to edit any of them i don't need to edit any of them because i'm quite happy where things are if you ever want to reset the drive completely, go into Tools and Factory Defaulted if you wish to do so. So then we come down to Commissioning. We can uh, we can uh, test traces if we wish to. Uh, to test interfaces if you wish to. Test the motor if you wish to. And also optimize. From there on, we're going to do one button auto tune. Just to give them a bit of good understanding of how the, what what motor is all about and what the near linear drive is, what is what his frictions are and all other stuff like that. So motor is going to learn that. So I haven't done that. So once we get, once we go on to this one, we select this one. I, I put this one at 360 degrees, so it's a full angle. So and uh, as you can see in here, it tells you it tells you if it's a TTL 200, 2500 pulses per revolution. Do make sure that uh, it has enough room to move around with a plus minus two revolutions from zero point. So do make sure if you're doing a live machine, there is that maneuver available. I'll show you in a minute what happens when you do this. So by enabling one button auto tune, we can turn servo on and he's going to start doing his thing. So now look at actual what is going on. Here we go. He's doing his business. He's doing quite loudly, moving around. So you can see he moved quite a bit. But in a minute you can see he's going to do very, very fast erratic movements. So you do need to make sure that that is possible for him to do when he does auto tune. So he learns everything there is to learn about this this uh, uh, linear actuator and the motor itself. Once you've done that, we click Accept, and it's going to say, do you want to save all modified parameters to ROM? ROM is actual memory inside the drive, and we do want to say yes, put that into the ROM. So it'll take a minute or two, so we'll be right back. Here we go, that's done. And we are pretty much done with VSS. There's nothing else I want to do in VSS. There's obviously a parameters you need to change for specific uh, specific uh, things and down the applications. But for basic, what we're trying to do, that is sufficient enough. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. In the next video, we're going to jump on TRPort. We'll get our drive working on our TRPort and start controlling it from TRPort. And there's a lot of things that we want to have a look at, it, how to make sure the communications and everything's working as smooth as possible. So do tune in for the upcoming videos. So thank you very much for watching. If you do like the video, do smash that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel. And again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.